Let me show you Africa as an entrepreneur. Africa is a fundamental part of the global economy. Uh, there's a way the world does business and there's a way we do business. When we put our faith and our trust in God, he's the master strategist and always directs our path. So it's a vibrant, young market with lots of energy. Along with our diverse cultures, provide us with rich insights into God and his creativity. There are people building businesses. So come, come see that out. A lot of the work we do at Leap Africa revolves around transforming Africa by equipping and empowering the next generation of leaders on the continent. One way this happens is through excellent work, and entrepreneurs have a unique opportunity to contribute to the flourishing of their own generation and of those to come. Faith-driven entrepreneurs especially should be pursuing excellence in all they do. Why? Because our God is a God of excellence. Think of all the beautiful things he has created, Victoria Falls, Mount Kilimanjaro, and the beautiful beaches of the Atlantic Ocean. God never takes shortcuts. He never underperforms. He seeks out excellence in all he does. As people made in his image, are we not called to do the same thing? Sure, we'll have moments where we stumble, but the pursuit of excellent work that blesses people is at the heart of faith-driven entrepreneurship. We see that pursuit clearly in this next story. This is a group that strives for excellence in their work, and I hope the story inspires you to do the same. Let's check it out. If you want to look for example of how businesses are run, people typically will mention Cotcheris. How founder has been able to delegate, because which is a challenge of a lot of founders of businesses. They tend to hold everything to themselves, including the vision, including the dream, strategy, that when they pass or when they're no longer in the business, nobody can even remember you know, what is important for the business. He has proven that it doesn't matter where you started from, it's where you're going that matters. Uh, so young people look at him as an example to say, yeah, his English is not perfect, his educational pursuits are not perfect, but he has exceeded all expectations and all limitations placed on him because he believed and he put his faith firmly in a God of miracles and a God who's a faithful father to those who commit their trust and their lives to him. My dad and my mom are mom and dad, primarily before I, as a kid, before you know about the outside life or the outside world, I knew for the longest time that we were Christians, before I knew we were wealthy. At the tender age of four, my father passed away. My mother, used to fly cake pins in the morning, give a bucket for my senior brother to go and sell and one for me to sell. But I didn't have opportunity to go to school. But I didn't want my not going to school to defy me, to you know, decide who I'm going to be. I believe everywhere I have been in life is a school. It's a question of whether I am willing to learn or not. So I sat down and said, I'm not going to be like every other boy. I wanted to be different from the rest of the people. I wrote five things I wanted to do, stuck it on top of my bed. I pray every night before I sleep. Those are the things I look up like this and look them up from up down, and I go to bed and sleep. My uncle, my mother's junior brother, brought me to Lagos here to work for him. He sent me to the, our village in Nnewi to set up a shop for a motorcycle pass. I did very well. So he counted 200 naira and gave me. The custom is that he need to pay for a store, give me some merchandise, and then set me up with some capital. But he gave me only 200 naira, that's all. I said, Uncle, five years from today, please make a note. If you had who I am, your head will be spinning. 
I left that place with my senior brother. We went home, team up, and form a company called Madaka Brothers. I have more knowledge for the business than my senior brother. Okay, so I knew every inch and out of automotive component, much more knowledge than him. What really created a problem was that because I was a Christian and I've also learned some basic principle about giving. When I'm going to church, I go with one naira. And um, so he told me I cannot be taking one naira from our business money for offering. He said he's not ready for this argument. We should part well. Within the one year, it's about the eight months into the business, we part well. Before the end of my 18, I find a young lady in our church in a choir. Uh, her name is Charity. She asked me, where am I taking her? I shared my vision with her. I told her, this is where I'm going to be by 21, 24. And she said, I'll support you. We'll do it together. But it was clear in my mind where I wanted to be in life. Because it's a journey of a voyage. I saw the destination, but all the route that would take me there was not known to me. We started headhunting, getting experts, people who have gone to university, who know how to manage business in a more structured manner. In 1982, I incorporated Cos Charis. Cos Charis is Cosmos and Charity. We are coming from a Christian background. We pray here before we start business in all our branches, wherever we are and we are not apologetic about it to let people know this is who we are because that is our source. Koscharis was started by a dynamic entrepreneurial couple, Cosmos Madoka and his wife Charity Madoka, many, many years ago. I think they were started this about 32 years ago. Um, and it's really now a group that has investments in tech, agriculture, automotive, a range of sectors, construction even. And this is a company that is truly rooted in a vision to create wealth for the kingdom. Again, I think the function of a desire, a desire was far more than that of his contemporaries. Many of them, their desires, I want to have money, maybe enjoy my money. But that's not his own desire. He desired to create a company that will last long after he has you know, exited his path. So he had to do things differently. So in terms of lessons for other entrepreneurs, you start from what is your vision? What do you want to achieve with all this tribe and all these uh, houses? I'm really happy that when people interact with us, they, the, the faith aspect of the business is in their forefront. It's not like they're, they're thinking, oh, I'm coming to some churchy place. They just, when I say the faith aspect, it's like, oh, we know we're dealing with someone who's honest, who's, who has integrity and you know, try to do what say what he will do and do what he will say. So um, most of our dealings end up favorably because of that, that goodwill or that reputation. He didn't have an uncle or an auntie that will help him. No, he just trusted God. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to work hard because doing the right thing doesn't mean laziness. You have to work hard for God to bless the works of your hand. And God does not bless nothing else. He say you prosper the works of your hands, so you have to do the work before he can bless it. If one of the key elements, the key drivers of the business from a value standpoint is the you know, integrity, credibility, how do you ensure that through the process? How do you ensure that we reward the appropriate, um, you know, incentivize the appropriate behaviors? And of course, you know, get people to walk away from those behaviors that you want to uh, minimize in the business. And so everything we do, rise on the fact that we want to show the light, to do it the right way, to show the people that look, you can do the right thing and still make money. You don't have to make money only when you do the wrong thing. Cosmos introduced one of his king's townsmen from Newi to a bank, Access Bank, where he had a seat on the board, where he was a major shareholder. Um, and a verbal introduction um, to the bank and this individual took a loan, the first loan he paid back, the second loan he paid back, and the third loan he defaulted, and it was worth millions of dollars. And Cosmos, because of his personal integrity and because he was the one who introduced this individual to the bank, 
essentially took upon himself to repay the debt because of his integrity. Not because he had any financial or fiduciary responsibility, but because his name was on the line. I oversee finance. I want money to flow in. He said, who tell me, sorry, Fred. You want money to flow in, but your costs are high. My costs are high because I want to follow the right principle, bring the goods through the ports, pay the duty, follow all the protocols, and I can tell you, it's not easy. It's expensive. It's easier to follow the other way. I won't say it's only us that do that, but there are few that follow that route, especially in automobile business in Nigeria. And today, because of his integrity, he basically can get loans without any collateral, without any requirement, because people know his name and his commitment to integrity supersedes anything else. Now that dispels all the reputational issues associated with being Nigerian. Most people think of Nigerian businessmen and they often think about fraud. Sadly, Cosmos is just one of the many examples of exemplary Christian entrepreneurs from this region who walk the talk um, and who take bold steps to live for God and work for God. Decision you made today determine who you are going to be in the next five years to come. As a matter of fact, decision you make today will determine your internal destination. But you must take responsibility. You won't put it on your father or your mother. It's your own decision. Life threw everything to me not to succeed. But I was determined that I'm going to succeed and I'm going to go places. A vision help you to simplify your life. So the real truth is that quite a number of people are living visionless life. Okay, so it, 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 to, to live a life without vision is worse than not having a physical sight. Because you, if, if you don't know where you are going, any wind will be the right wind. You keep, drift, you keep drifting, you keep drifting. But you got to be sure this is the harbor that I'm seeking. Then you can direct the wind to go to that harbor. But in the midst of it, God will give you, provide you a way to be able to go. Those things are part of your uh, processes you are going through to refine you to you know to you know clean you up to you know get you matured for the main thing where you are going The work of your hands is a reflection of who God is and an offering of worship to Him. It ought to be done to the very best of your ability. It must be done with excellence. In Matthew 5, 13 to 15, Jesus says that the believers are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. In the first century Mediterranean world, salt was used not only to flavor food, but also as a preservative. It made the things it touched better and longer lasting. It goes on to say that we should shine our light in the world so others will see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. Everything we do in our work, our attitude, competence, skill, and dependability all have an impact on how the world sees God. We're not talking about perfection here. In the book of Daniel, we read several times that he was a man with an excellent spirit. He still had made mistakes. He still sinned. But what stands out about Daniel is his relentless commitment to doing what was right in God's sight his diligence in acquiring knowledge and skill, and the integrity with which he went about his work. That's excellence. A wholehearted commitment to obeying and pleasing God, outworked through a consistent pursuit of diligence and integrity in everything we do. In Colossians 3, 23 to 24, the Apostle Paul says the following, whatever you do, work at it with your heart, as working for the Lord, not for the human masters, since you know you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It's the Lord Christ you are serving. He says pretty much the same thing in Ephesians 6, 5 to 8, but emphasizes that excellence means that you're doing your best, even when no one is watching, 
and there's no one's favor to be gained. As an entrepreneur, you're not just serving your customers and investors, but God himself. Your work is for the Lord and is an offering to God. Does your work reflect this? Excellence extends into your workplace culture, your reputation, your products. The standards you set for quality, timeliness, integrity, and respect for people and the environment will directly impact the values and behavior of your employees, business partners, and investors. And as you do this faithfully, you can create an environment where conversations about faith can take place naturally. Excellence doesn't just happen, it's the result of continued obedience. When you set your course with the glory of God as your destination and wholeheartedly stick to it through the good times and the bad, the quality of your work will increasingly reflect the excellence befitting an ambassador of God's kingdom. And as the conviction grows in your heart that as believers, our excellence serves those around us and glorifies the God who is above us, you'll experience a greater measure of joy in the fruit of your labor. How are you prioritizing excellence in your work and through your business? Take some time to talk about this with your group and use these discussion questions to help guide your conversations.